So hello and welcome. This is gonna be another feedback style of video today. I've actually got some videos that one of my patrons has sent in and I'm really happy to be able to review this, give some feedback to him. Uh, his name's Trang and he's really enthusiastic and really trying to uh, maximize his progress at the moment. He's training a lot you know, at close range as you'll see in the videos, but really happy to be able to provide this feedback uh, and then we can go through and hopefully you guys can benefit from it as well. So let's now get into the videos. I wanna show you a couple of the video clips first of Trang shooting and then we'll go into the feedback. So as you can see in those clips, really, really good foundation for the technique that Trang has, and then just a couple of points to improve on. Uh, I should mention at the start that Trang had a couple of questions. One of them was, does his bow shoulder need to be lower? The other question he asked was, does his draw elbow need to be higher? Because I think some people have mentioned that his draw elbow is a bit low, but to him, sometimes it feels like uh, when it's lower, he gets a better connection to his back. So that was another question that he had. Uh, and then just any general points in terms of you know how to improve. So I wanna start really with uh, just providing an overview. My main uh, things that I would work on is alignment and execution, so the release execution. Now for that, I wanna start with the, uh, with the overhead. So let's go to uh, the overhead video here. So from the overhead, what we can see is alignment is decent, generally a good alignment, which is really nice. So you can see a decent line through pressure point, bow shoulder, and draw shoulder here. But you can see it's not perfect yet in terms of we could have, so this joint of the bow shoulder here and this joint of draw shoulder and pressure point ideally would be in a straight line, but not quite yet. So we could get a little bit better line through there. And I'll come back to that in a little bit. Now. The importance of this is it's gonna help the execution of the shot, the release here. And what I mean by that is if we really look closely, you'll see if we watch around the elbow here, so if you watch just on the elbow, just around here, on the moment of release, you'll see a slight collapse. So what I mean by that is when the elbow uh, is releasing, it goes a little bit forwards and then back. So we can see that. Let's go through. So watch the elbow here forwards, there, so this is the full draw position, and then forwards, and then back. So a little collapse there. And that's actually something we can see on some other clips as well. If we watch from the six o'clock angle, we can see on release, if we watch the elbow, there, just a little movement forwards and then back. So, I should say that, and like I said before, I can really see that Trang has got a great foundation of the technique, has been working really hard on this, but I wanna give the maximum value uh, in terms of what to work on going forwards. Um, so there's are, there are obviously really good things in terms of posture's really good, no arching the back, head position, body's pretty stable. Um, so yeah, it's really good things with the technique, but I'm just going for the fine details here to help out. So let's go to now the, uh, let's go to the three o'clock. And now I wanna address how to improve that alignment and the release. So those are, that's the overview. Now, if we look here, the bow shoulder height, and this was one of the things Trang asked about, should it be lower? Because of the, the little bit of the arm here, which is above the arrow, is basically the reason he was asking that. The simple answer is yes, it does need to be a little bit lower. Obviously it does depend, if we go to the uh, nine o'clock angle, it does depend on people's uh, neck length, and stuff like that and body shape. So obviously if you've got a longer neck, there'll be more space between the arrow and the shoulder. That being said, for the vast majority, for like 99% of people, there should be a gap between the arrow and the shoulder. 
and in this case for Trang as well, it does mean that it just needs to be a little bit more space. So what's happening here? As Trang is lifting, the shoulder is okay. Here, still okay. And you can see the line of the blade is somewhere around here. But as the shoulder raises, you'll see that it's not just the hand here which is raising, but also the blade and the joint of the shoulder here. So you'll see as he's raising, there, now the shoulder has raised and you can the telltale sign for that is the lack of space between the jaw and the shoulder here. So I'll play that again back a little bit more slowly, but there. So that's the point where the shoulder has raised just a little bit. So it's coming up, coming up, and then just raised a little. So the key thing there at that point, and this is what I mentioned to a lot of the archers that I do coaching with as well, is at that 45 degree angle. So if we go but at that 45 degree angle here, you need to feel under the armpit area, like you're keeping that engaged and using the tricep of the bow arm, using that to prevent the shoulder coming up. So using under the armpit area, feeling that engaged and maintaining that. But at the moment, it's not quite there for Trang and that's why the shoulder's coming up a little bit there. Now, with the elbow rotation, you can see that the elbow rotation here happens at the right time in the shot, but when it happens, so elbow rotation there, when it happens there's a little bit too much shoulder rolling, which then means that it's gonna be hard to get that really nice strong feeling in the shoulder. The reason this is so important is because it all impacts that moment of execution from the overhead that I showed you, that moment of execution here all this line and setting up the shoulders correctly impacts that. So I definitely work on that. With regards to the shoulder as well, the, the bow shoulder, if we, we look at the other angle, which is 11 o'clock, you can see this on the release, and this is a little bit more uh, obvious on the release to watch. You can see again at the moment of release, there, you can see the bow shoulder being push back a little bit, and that just slight hesitation on release effectively. Ideally, you would just want the draw hand to move backwards, elbow to move backwards without having that collapse, and the bow shoulder to maintain still. So that execution error at the moment is gonna be a really big potential gain for you, Trang, in terms of working on that. If you can work to eliminate that, it's gonna be really, really big. So the way that you would do that, especially on the front side, the way that you would do that is by working on that bow shoulder height, starting with a band to work on it, but working on that bow shoulder height, then with a light bow, and then with your main bow. That's really, really key. Once you then have that, it will be easier for you to get your alignment. If we look at this video, it will be easier for you to get your alignment and bring that bow shoulder a little bit closer in. So instead of being here, and here, and here, we can bring the bow shoulder a little bit further in and get a nice straight line between all those points basically. So it will be something a little bit closer to that because at the moment it's just that line isn't quite there and then also because of the slight rolling of the bow shoulder and not quite having the correct height of the bow shoulder as well, those two things means that when you release it gets kicked back a little bit. So that's what I wanted to mention uh, on the bow shoulder side. Now in terms of the draw elbow, let's go to the front view. The draw elbow, Trang asked about should it be higher? The honest thing here is that it's not too important. There's not sort of one size fits all in terms of the height of the elbow, but looking through the videos for Trang, being a little bit higher could be good. And the reason for that is often, what I see in a lot of the archers I coach as well, is often that the draw elbow coming down during expansion and the bow shoulder coming up and then collapsing. It's quite a common issue in terms of coming to full draw not quite being able to get through because the line isn't there, similar to your self trang as well, but not being able to quite get through because the line's not there. And in order to do that, lowering the draw elbow and then the bow shoulder coming up and then being kicked back. And this is the same in this case as well. So what I mentioned before, I showed you the draw elbow just moving slightly forward on the release. I also showed you the bow shoulder being kicked back a little bit. Now I'll try and show you the expansion movement. So, so you can come in here, there. So that movement there, if you watch, if you kind of uh, zoom in closely here, you can see that as Trang is coming in, the draw elbow goes down, down, and as the draw elbow is going down, 
bow shoulder effectively is coming up and collapsing inwards a little bit. And that then means that on release, that's gonna to continue to happen and it will get kicked back and then the draw side isn't quite as strong as well. So this is really, really key. To over-exaggerate this, I can describe it as this. We want this position at full draw and to expand like this, but at the moment, we're a little bit like this. That's a big exaggeration, obviously, but that's the kind of key difference here. So we wanna go, instead of expanding this way, we wanna make sure that instead of being here, we're here, and then expand around whilst keeping the body rather than expanding down like that. That's really, really key. It's, just, it's something I see in a lot of archers, um, and particularly in terms of if the alignment isn't quite there, and then also if you're just pulling a little bit too far to get through the clicker, that can also exacerbate that. Um, so in this case, it does look like it's a tricky one because at this current position, you're having to draw through a little bit too much with the clicker. But when you work on your bow shoulder, lowering it, getting a bit better line, it will massively increase your draw length. So I wouldn't suggest uh, moving your clicker away and making your draw length shorter because eventually you're gonna kind of bring it back in anyway. <laughs> so really working on the bow shoulder is that key bit there. Now I just wanna to go to the other side as well. So I mentioned about the alignment and execution. I wanna to go to here. So with this, what I wanted to show you is the same thing on the release, just from this different angle. So if you watch the elbow again here, this one is actually a little bit less, so there's not really a, as much of a visible collapse here on the elbow, but what you can see is just a little bit too much body movement on release, and in terms of the elbow, watch the path of the elbow, it's a little bit too low, so it goes down too far, and that's a little bit because of the height of the elbow that I mentioned there. So overall, really good technique, really solid technique, but some key things to work on, especially in terms of, you can see really well from this video actually, just this bow shoulder height coming up. So there, let's show that again. Just coming up there and raising a little bit. So I definitely encourage Trang for you to work on the number one priority is the bow shoulder. Under the tricep, under the uh, armpit feeling, using the tricep as you lift at that 45 degree angle. And then when you're doing the elbow rotation, not allowing the shoulder to roll, that's really, really key. And then with that, getting a little bit better line from the overhead. So working on bringing that bow shoulder in a little bit more alignment from the overhead angle. Then once you have that as well, keeping the draw elbow on release coming around and then keeping the bow arm on release from collapsing. There's a couple of things here and it's really important to get the video feedback to analyze whether you're doing it correctly. So using slow motion or just going frame by frame like I'm doing uh, like in the video now when I watch through, when I go frame by frame like this, that's really helpful to see. But in terms of feelings, a couple of things. On release, making sure to keep that underarm feeling that I mentioned on the bow shoulder side, but then also keeping the bow arm tricep engaged. So when you're releasing, keep the arm straight, elbow rotated, bow arm tricep engaged and maintain the tension in your bow arm towards the target. Don't just suddenly let everything relax. That's a lot of the reason why that's happening at the moment. And then the other big reason is just the height of the bow shoulder uh, and the line like I mentioned. On the draw shoulder side, you can just make sure to maintain a little feeling of squeezing between, if I make a line, between the upper and the lower arm here. So make sure you're squeezing around and another drill that you can do this with is the arrow in elbow device drill, which is one that I <laughs> keep talking about all the time. Um, but the arrow in elbow device drill, really, really good for this. And another thing for this is to not tighten or not uh, tense the bicep, but just make sure you are using some bicep tension to link your hook and your elbow into your back. It's this common fallacy, I don't know where <laughs> this has come from, but loads of people say there should be no, no bicep tension or people think there should be no usage of your arm when you're shooting and everything should be on your back. And I kind of get what they mean because you have to use the scapula in the right way, but to say that there should be no bicep tension at all is just deluded 
and wrong. So if there's no bicep tension, you will release like this. So, and when you release like this, the elbow will also come forwards. So when you're releasing, you're not gonna suddenly tense your bicep and, and like really engage it or something, because that's obviously not what I mean. But when you are releasing, when you're squeezing the upper and the lower arm together, it will naturally engage a little bit and activate the bicep and continue squeezing around as you release. So if I do it just now like this, I can feel the bicep is working. I'm not deliberately engaging it or activating or anything, but it is working as I go round, and this can help keep the fingers a little bit tighter to the neck. If you're not sure how to do this, you can just do it maybe with a drill, like I've said many times before. You can scratch the fingers along the neck and see and feel, oh, okay, the bicep's slightly engaged and working when I do that. Whereas if I release like this, the bicep is just suddenly relaxing. So you can tell the difference there. It's pretty easy to kind of demo that for yourself um, if you're watching at home as well. So those are the main points. Bow shoulder, definitely work on that. Alignment from overhead, really, really important. And then that release execution, those are the three main points. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. I hope, Trang, that you found it helpful for your feedback as well. I think you're doing a great job. I think there's just some key areas to continue working on and it's really important to get that video feedback while you're shooting close range blank boss and you haven't got the score feedback as well from the, from the target. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you wanna follow up, there's a great uh, patron-only video on the bow shoulder scapula that I've done, and that addresses a few more issues with the, the scapula that I mentioned before. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, you can join me on Patreon, um, and the link for that will be below. But I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.